everyone. I'm Mandy Hutchinson. And I'm Ashley Garvey. And today we are doing a first look of Deep Fence. So Deep Fence is designed by T. Alex Davis and Ryan Lockett. Art is by Ryan Lockett, and it is published by Red Raven Games. Let's now dive in and learn how to play Deep Fence. Deep Fence is a tile placement engine building game in which each player is developing a hydrothermal ecosystem around their deep vent. Each turn, you'll add a new creature, on a tile, into your area, and then you'll grow or trigger everything in your area in the hopes of creating a flourishing and efficient ecosystem. But beware, other players' predators can attack and damage your thriving system, and if you don't plan well, you might find yourself eliminated from the game entirely. A turn in Deep Fence is straightforward. Add a new tile from the face-up display to your ecosystem, and then activate each of your tiles from left to right, top to bottom. To acquire a tile, you may have to spend Archaea, which is the main resource in the game. The leftmost tile is free, but for each tile you skip over, pay one Archaean from your personal supply. If later a player takes a tile with Archaea on it, these Archaea remain on the tile until the player triggers it. After adding the tile to your ecosystem, such that an edge touches an already placed tile, you activate each tile by either choosing to grow or trigger it. A tile's grow ability is found on the right-hand side, and it usually adds a number of archaea to the tile accordingly. The archaea grown remain on a tile until they are used by triggering the tile. The other option you can choose when activating a tile. A tile's trigger ability is shown on the left-hand side and usually involves spending a number of archaea from that tile to take an action, sometimes adding archaea to your personal supply and often attacking other players. The red arrow on the left side of a tile indicates an attack, and when triggered, this attack affects all other players who then must lose Archaea from their personal supply equal to the attack's strength. Over the course of the game, players may acquire shells, which reduce the damage from an attack in half. If a player can't lose the Archaea, they must take a shortfall token, which gives them 10 Archaea, but also limits them on their future turns. For instance, if you have a shortfall token, you are only allowed to take the leftmost free tile to add to your ecosystem. Also, if you ever end your turn with two shortfall tokens, then you are eliminated from the game. Thankfully, you can spend 10 Archaea from your personal supply to pay off the shortfall token at any time on your turn. A game of deep vents ends in one of two ways, either after 8 rounds, once everyone has placed 9 tiles in their ecosystem, or once all but one player is eliminated from the game. If the game ends after 8 rounds, remaining players then gain points for Archaea in their personal supply and on their tiles, unused shells, and lose points for each shortfall token in their possession. Of course, the player with the most points would then win. Okay, Ashley, so remember everybody, this is first look. What are your thoughts on defense? I was very worried in the beginning about playing defense because I there's a lot of player aggression in the game and I am not one who likes any kind of mean mean attacking elements in, in the gameplay. Uh, and so I was worried, but I found that it worked okay in this game, even though you attack a lot and it is very mean because the attacks aren't uh, targeting a single player. They're actually targeting every player at the table. Uh, so that that sort of dispersed the tension that you often feel. Um, but Mandy, you're like me. You don't really like aggression in games. So no. what did you think of it? Well, I looked at the art and I was like, oh, it's so pretty and it's so cute. I mean, it has like a dragony, fishy thing. I don't know what it is, okay? But something along those lines on it's the a cover. Squid. Oh, okay, a squid. But I thought maybe it'll be like, you know, like a Finding Nemo. Not, You know what I mean, that kind of friendly-esque feel to it. No, that is not what happened. It did have that attacky vibe to it, but I didn't hate it, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, I felt like it was kind of necessary in this game. And I found that the really big thing that I enjoyed was the order, I don't want to say order of operations, but where you placed your tiles and how things happened. Because you were like, yeah, it goes uh, left to right. Yeah, top left to, to right, top down. Yeah, Right. And uh, that for me was the biggest thing because I was like, ha, 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 I can, you know, work off of someone else and make them lose points. Oh, wait, no, I put it after. So I can't even make this happen. So like that in itself was something else I could basically get myself into trouble at the same time. So yes, you can go after people, but I could also do bad things to myself, which is makes you think a little bit more about not just aggressively going after people. 
Yeah, I would agree that tile placement element of the game is very interesting because, you know, with tile placement, you're used to, you know, putting a tile down and having the things connected to it or adjacent to it matter right. and like, you know, have them be um, strengthened or weakened because of what they're next to. But with this game, not only do you have to worry about that, you also have to worry about how high in your tableau or how low in your tableau and what is coming before it uh, that it matters with the tile placement, which was really neat. Uh, I found it to be refreshing, actually. Yeah, no, it was just good. And then I saw the whole player elimination thing and I went, uh, anything mm-hmm. that has player elimination, I'm like, uh, no, not for yeah. me. But it was weird because I felt like we were all kind of on that brink of elimination. Yeah, like our final scores were very low. We all just made it to the end, but we did not score well. And that could be attributed to the fact that, you know, we were playing remotely yeah. uh, and it was, you know, initial plays of the game. But yeah, I you're right i just i was worried that one of us would be kicked out and then you know you're just hanging around and okay is this game over but no like we all had that moment we were kind of close to that point but we were still engaged in the game so i can appreciate that to a certain degree but yes this is a game and i mean we're in the times now where we're playing things we're trying to get things played remotely this is not the game for that and this is why we're kind of doing it as a first looks because it wouldn't be fair for us to review it based on the play we've had online over like through video and things like that it's not the same so I think this is one that you'd have to play in person before you could 100% review it. I would agree. To elaborate a little bit on what you said, part of the reason why you need to be able to uh, see all the tiles that everyone has right. is because there's so much engine building going on within the game, not only in your own tableau, but in within other people's tableaus. And you need to be able to uh, account for what people are going to do on their next turn or how they're going to attack you so that you can prepare for it or what kind of engine they're building around and if you can maybe take advantage of that and then attack them later so absolutely remotely we weren't able to see all the tiles very well we weren't able to see you know what each of us were doing and that definitely affected the game play but not that's not the game's fault right exactly it's just the situation that we were in yeah, absolutely. So this is one I'm definitely, I, I, I liked it. I liked what I, I saw of it and what we played, and I would definitely would want to play it in person so, you know, we can actually see what other people are doing. So that was the biggest thing for me. I couldn't really see what other people are doing, and that might have changed some decisions I had with some of the tiles I chose or where I chose to place them. And this is different for 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 Ryan Lockett. I feel a lot of his games are not, well, then again, I shouldn't say that, actually, because I did see one of his other games being played that did kind of have that take that element to it, don't know if it's out yet do you know which game i'm talking about it was one i saw being played i think it may have come to kickstarter it was in the process of is it sleeping gods maybe that was it i think that was the one i was thinking of so i had seen it being played uh, i think suzanne and rado were playing and i was i was mm. able to watch and it did have some kind of take that moments but not like this so this definitely for me is a little outside of what i've seen from red raven games I would agree. Uh, and like you said, I'm interested in playing it again, even though it was aggressive and there was that element, the engine building kind of made up for it. And because it was so evenly dispersed, uh, it's one that I'd be curious to uh, definitely check out again. Yeah. So that's it for me. Do you have anything else you want to add, Ashley? Nope. All right. So don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the things. I think it's down here somewhere. Yeah. So do that. <laughs> If you want to see more of our little first looks, reviews, and all that good stuff. So thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.